Oh, not that kind of hit. So today's elevator parts project, we're working on this D button. And this thing's pretty interesting. I've never seen these, because obviously they're not from the United States. I've seen these buttons on YouTube plenty of times. Never actually pressed them until I've got this button. And I will say they're pretty interesting. They press kind of like Dover Impulse. It's because they have micro switches in them. So we're going to take a detailed look at this button and then wire it up. So up here at the top, we've got the information and the translation on the side. The next bit down, this is where your little indicator lights are. In this case, only one of the three actually has a light behind it, but other things could be placed up here if needed. This here is the door button. And down here is the actual call button. Here's a look at the button from the side. You see it's got this little spot here for a light. In this case, there is a light. And then the button kind of angles out here. And when you press it in, it presses on a slant. So there's a uh, pivot point up here. The door button does not have the light. So it's just a button. And then you can see here the little lights kind of fold out a little bit, but we'll take this out and take a closer look at it. And looking at the back here, we can see there's not really a whole lot to this. I mean have these little kind of cases on the back, which is what holds it in. And taking a closer look inside, you can see there are two micro switches, which is why I say they're like Dover. This button here has a little circuit board with a couple LEDs in it. The middle button is just like the call button, except no circuit board. And the little indicator board has a single light here, and there's even a little buzzer right there. We're not gonna hook that up in this project, but it's kind of neat that it's in there. And then there's all the ground wires, so now let's take a closer look at how these work. We'll start up here with the indicator light. Now in this particular case, there's this little metal bar here, which is holding it in place. And to remove that, we just pull the little pins out. The whole thing pulls out. And this is what it looks like. Each of the little indicator lights can pull away. This little plastic piece here, and then this other plastic piece underneath. This one's blank. As for the one that actually has a light, you can see this one has some text, and underneath reveals this little LED bar here. This is actually a modular piece. This can be pulled out, and then the circuit board can be removed. And looking down in there, you can see the buzzer. These metal housing pieces could be removed if you wanted. You'd have to squeeze them in and push them out. Now as for the buttons, up here there are these little metal pieces. And if we just use a little pencil and push them in, and then you have to rotate the button and pull down and lift up and you can pull the button out. And this is what one of the buttons look like. Up here we can see the pivot point with the little springs that push the pins out. Here's the light piece and we can slide this out. This also reveals something kind of interesting. You'll notice that the light is composed of two pieces with little squares and there's only two little square lights in the back instead of one long bar and respectively each one has its own light. So theoretically you could light these up individually. You can see the circuit board down there. Here's the actual button piece, and looking closely, you notice this piece could actually slide out, and you could slide another piece inside. And the same kind of thing with this button. This is just a metal piece. Instead of having the plastic, you'd slide the metal on there. And looking down inside, you can see the two micro switches, and this is what's pressed when you push in on the button. I'm guessing this screw is like a adjustment or a stopper of some sort. I'm not too sure. Maybe it holds the micro switches in place. Not really gonna mess with it. So now it's time to get to wiring this thing. So as always, we're gonna use a nine volt battery, but these buttons run on 24 volts. So what I'm gonna use is this little circuit board, which we can use to bump the voltage up to 28 volts. Now our current output on these things is quite low, but we don't need a lot of current to activate our LEDs. So this is going to work perfectly. And I've also got a large assortment of wires and a schematic in my head on how I'm gonna make this all work. So what's gonna happen, you'll press this button in, these lights will come on. You press this button in, this light up here will come on. So let's go ahead and get started.
Alright, so here we have the wiring complete. I'm just going to grab some electrical tape and cover up the bottom of this little board so we don't short anything. And there we go, covered the back. So the real question is now, will it work? What we need to do is adjust this thing to 24 volts, which we're gonna do pretty easily. So to adjust the voltage, I've disconnected this one here and we'll put our multimeter on and get it to 24 volts. So currently we're reading no volts because we haven't pressed the button in. So if we press the button in, we go right up to 24 volts. So we don't even actually have to adjust this thing, which is super cool. All right, all the wiring's complete. We're gonna still tidy it up in the back and clean this thing up, but let's take a look at it, see if it works. We've got our battery hooked up here, our little circuit board here, and there we go. We press this, this light comes on, it tells you it's here. And when we press this button, you see it lights up both red and yellow. So essentially, from what I could gather, correct me if I'm wrong, the yellow light means that there's a call in place. Like when you press it, it lights up saying your call is registered. And the red light means that it's in movement. So like it's being used. So it's kind of like an in use light. That's what I've gotten out of that. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Which is kind of interesting how there's this, uh, this light as well. I guess it just tells you if it's here, but that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with the way this came out and the way that looks. That looks pretty cool. So the next thing to do is just wire manage a little bit and clean it up. And there we go, the completed Dev button. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a more detailed look at these fixtures and a little insight on what I did to wire this thing up and make it work. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this part video. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.